Thank you very much for tuning in to 89.7 Contact FM. Many, many thanks for those who are following us uh, on Twitter and uh, already using our hashtag. Uh, that is hashtag 101RW. That is 101RW. And of course, uh, following us uh, uh, each and every time that we are on air. And that is at uh, 7.30 a.m. in the morning and uh, 6.30 p.m. Plus, of course, uh, those who listen in to the rebroadcast, the timings are 9.30 p.m. For those who want to catch the whole week's shows we have a marathon rebroadcast each and every sunday from 9 p.m today my guest in studio is none other than willie rukundo and uh, before you came on air i was telling him every time i refer to this name i feel tempted to add dr willie rukundo probably because of dr willie mutunga of kenya but i don't really understand probably he should have been the doctor do you think uh, the same Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but it never happened. <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, Willie, thank you very much for joining us on One on One. Thanks for having We're here me. to have a candid chat on uh, your personality in terms of uh, who and what you've been able to achieve so far. Plus, of course, many have been asking, where is Willie nowadays uh, after his times at, uh, you know, Orenfo and now RBA? What do you do nowadays? Well, I would say that I'm a private citizen mm -hmm. doing my private businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, even when I was at Orenfall, I was doing some commercial farming. Mm -hmm. And that is what I'm engaged in these days so much. Okay. That I take time, write some things, do some consultants' works as far as the media is concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep quiet in my home. Is it less pressurizing than the, like, of unlike course, the days? Of course, of, of course. I always tell people that uh, I, always, I was always in the public eye. Mm -hmm. But now I'm in private eye. So and you feel better. I take my time. I do what I plan according to my plans. Mm -hmm. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah. Now, talking of no pressure, now, before uh, the time when uh, you were relieved of your duties or the time that uh, someone else was picked and that was Arthur Asimwa to replace you, this was in 2013 on uh, April 24th. An announcement was made that Arthur was going to now be the uh, Director General of uh, RBA that was now replacing Orenfo. How did you feel when this announcement was made? I would say that um, as always, in any country, mm -hmm. in any state, mm -hmm. there is an appointing authority. Mm -hmm. And as far as you are always put into a certain position, mm -hmm. you better know in your mind that time is coming when I'm leaving this office mm -hmm. so that you don't get shocked or you don't get disorganized. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just received it that way. Mm -hmm. The appointing authority had decided to bring in new administration mm -hmm. and I had to vacate. Are you trying to say you had already prepared yourself for moving out? I knew because I had even seen... The uh, signs? No, no, not signs, mm -hmm. but I had seen previous director generals of that organization moving out at a certain time. Mm -hmm. So me having been sitting in that office for four good years, mm -hmm. I knew that any time... Anything can happen. You you sat there for four good years, as you say. Yes. And then uh, when uh, the new team was appointed, um, there are those who expect that at least for the time that you served there, and for what you did while you were there, at least you deserved a position either as an advisor, either as a committee member, or deputized even at the same way. What, what was your feeling or what is your thought for having been left out completely? No, no, I think that would be a question that would be very relevant to appointing authorities, not me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But would you have loved uh, to at least played a role in the new team? Um, you know, serving Rwandans mm -hmm. is an issue that uh, any Rwandan can feel proud of serving them at different times. Mm -hmm. And I have been in that organization for mm -hmm. good 20 years mm -hmm. because I started working there in 1994 mm -hmm. as a junior reporter. Mm -hmm. And I had lost through all the ranks, mm -hmm. becoming chief editor, head of English department, then then the director of the radio station, then director of the organization. Mm -hmm. And I felt I had done my humble contribution mm -hmm. in uh, as far as the media is concerned, as far as improving what we are doing was concerned. And I felt that 20 years would be enough. So Why can't we have a new blood, new blood coming in there? In? Yes, so, so yeah. you feel you've reached equilibrium. Yeah, yeah. Now let's talk mm -hmm. about your times uh, over there because there are those who particularly felt like, um, you know, anytime they mentioned Rwanda television, uh, they would feel like, oh, that boring TV. And yet it's a state, uh, that time it was state-run media institution. And therefore, um, uh, they would feel bored. They would feel like they don't want to watch it. 
would you say that they judged you unfairly? Um, on one part, I would say that was unfair because mm-hmm. they never knew the intricacies that were involved in running a TV station like that one. Mm-hmm. You see, when you want to look at an institution, mm-hmm. you need to look at its background. Mm-hmm. How did it start? What mm-hmm. was its vision and mandate? Mm-hmm. What were the equipment in place when this institution was beginning? Mm-hmm. And especially that is why people are always complaining about TV. Why not radio? Mm-hmm. Mm? Mm-hmm. And that is where the issue is. Mm-hmm. I remember in 1995, mm-hmm. that was just one year after the genocide, mm-hmm. that is when we started from scratch to try and bring up a TV station. Mm-hmm. You remember that a TV in Rwanda was a very new animal because it had started as a project mm-hmm. in 1993. Mm-hmm. And that was just in the middle of the war. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're talking of a lack of skilled yeah, and lack exposed of skills, lack technicians of and, 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 and people. And in 1994, mm-hmm. the whole TV station was destroyed, mm-hmm. equipment rooted, mm-hmm. and we were starting from scratch. Mm-hmm. And because of that, even we never had enough resources to like have enough money to buy right equipment at the right time, equip people with skills so that you have a real TV team in terms of production and whatnot. Yes. And I knew people never knew that. Mm -hmm. They would look at Rwanda television Mm -hmm. and look at BBC. Mm-hmm. and want to be at power with BBC. But really, someone will argue and say, look, this is a station that had the full backing of a government. Mm-hmm. Talk of money, you need money for equipment, take the money. Uh, you need people to hire, go ahead and hire them, we will pay them. <laughs> you had all that you wa- you needed to run uh, that is the station in the level of BBC. The public never understood properly. Mm-hmm. Because, for example, how much, how much money mm-hmm. was a TV reporter Annie. Annie. Mm-hmm. How much? I don't peanut. know. It Would was like, w- I remember by the time I was leaving, mm-hmm. they were just getting 170,000. 170? This yeah. is gross? Yes. So you can imagine the market outside here. Mm-hmm. And we would always train people and we would see people moving out. Mm-hmm. That is why you'll find men or info staff in BBC radio, mm-hmm. in VOA radio and TV. Mm-hmm. Why? They have the skills, but mm-hmm. they go for greener pastures. Mm-hmm. So we had that thing of, and these people are being handled like civil servants. Mm-hmm. So you would not say I'm raising because I'm the manager. I have made some money, so I have traced their salaries. Mm-hmm. No. You so had so how, how, did you, how, how did you deal with that uh, in your own perspective? Because as, as, as the leader at that particular time, you had to come up with a creative way of, of tackling the issue. Uh, how did you manage that? How did you deal with that? I think uh, the best thing is that when you don't have the resources at your disposal, at least you know how to talk and handle the staff Mm -hmm. so that they can understand that you are with them Mm -hmm. in all these difficulties, but Mm -hmm. still you have to serve our people. Even if at the end of the month your salary was close to... But you have to serve our people. Mm -hmm. And that is how we would make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Would would they believe you when you told them this? Because at the end of the day, if you look at the salary structure, definitely the DJ was earning more than... Uh, even six times more than what the junior reporters were earning. They would believe me because I had lost through the lungs. Mm-hmm. I have sat with them in the newsroom. Mm-hmm. I had sat them as a head of radio. Mm-hmm. I had sat with them as a, a junior reporter with them. Mm-hmm. So they knew that I was with them. Okay. And that is why even we came up with the new bills mm-hmm. that we took to parliament, mm-hmm. which later on were adopted. And today we have Rwanda Broadcasting Agency mm-hmm. with special status. Mm-hmm. And now I think the director general and the board of directors mm-hmm. can decide on the salaries of the staff. Mm-hmm. So they are in a better position today than the, po- in po- the position that we are in. Do you feel like uh, you know a pioneer, like a person who fought for these freedoms? With the support of the government officials. Mm-hmm. Because I alone couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. But we would work with the ministry in charge of information. Mm-hmm. We would work with different commissions in parliament. Mm-hmm. And uh, f- things would go, would move on. In many cases, we see national broadcasters of different countries. Let me just stay close here in the East African community. Um, most of the time, you'll find the judgment from the public on them always harsh. Do you feel that indeed the public needs to get to know more about what really happens in the back, uh, you know, behind the curtains? I think the public before they judge the public needs to know, mm-hmm. but even people working in those institutions mm-hmm. need to know the needs and demands from the public, mm-hmm. and that is why we were always struggling to make sure that mm-hmm. we get a new agency. Mm-hmm. 
that is quite a bit detached from the government. Was so, the government affecting you guys so much that you really wanted to detach from it? You know, for example, if you look at Orenfor, mm. it's an abbreviation in French. Mm -hmm. It's an office of the government uh, information. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. So you can imagine uh, bringing up and establishing an institution and you call it an office of government information. Mm. Which means like the, the information the that spokes, has go, yeah, uh, it spokes, becomes like uh, that. The mouthpiece. Yeah, but when we are drafting the bill mm. that later on became the law governing rainfall, to, I mean Arabia today, mm -hmm. we are saying we need a public broadcaster. Mm -hmm which should be a bridge between the public mm -hmm. and the government. Mm -hmm. So that if a minister, a mm -hmm. mayor, mm -hmm. or an executive secretary says this and this, yes. then they have the right to go and cross-check with the public because mm -hmm. they are serving the public. Yes. Even and then, so you become a bridge. Yes. Mm -hmm. But even then, during mm -hmm. that time, they were still serving the public. The, the, the money was used uh, that was being used to support the projects of Orenfo were from the public, uh, the Treasury. coffers' money, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So do you feel the public got uh, a raw deal from what they were receiving from Renfo during that time? I would time. say they never got what they were supposed to get mm -hmm. because of the legal framework that we are working in. Mm -hmm. But today they have a new legal framework mm -hmm. whereby they have the independence of working especially for the common ordinary Rwandan mm -hmm. in his village. Mm -hmm. And then you, you take this information to the leader mm -hmm. and say somebody may be in Gishamvu mm -hmm. is saying Mitwere is not working very well. Mm -hmm. What is your position on mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Which wasn't the case before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we would always be looking at what is the government, what is the government saying, mm -hmm. what is the government saying. Mm -hmm. And we would relay this information to the public. Mm -hmm. But to always be hard to make sure that it is a two-way traffic. Mm, it was, yeah. was, was the issue. Mm. So today, when you sit at home and watch uh, Rwanda TV, uh, w when you see what is happening there, what comes to your mind? How do you feel? Uh, what comes if you compare with what was there when you were there? What comes to my mind is that there is some improvement mm -hmm. because, first of all, they have a new legal framework. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that, uh, especially with TV, Rwanda Television never had a graphics department. Mm -hmm. And you know, his TV, it is always about the quality of the picture. Maybe take us through the picture of, or paint for us a picture of really what used to happen there. So that mm. we can probably understand from department <laughs> to department what really was taking place before we see it on our screens and feel like yes, smashing yes, those TVs. Yes, You know, it's very hard even to paint that picture. Because when you would enter the studio of Rwanda Television, mm -hmm. or even if today you enter, mm -hmm. you would say this is magic being done here. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were broadcasting under 17 mm -hmm. competitions that we are here in Rwanda, I think in 2010. Yes. Uh, we had some Italian guys that we had hired to come and assist us because we were broadcasting to various countries across the globe. Mm -hmm. And when they entered our studios, mm -hmm. The guy who had entered just ran down mm -hmm. and called his friends mm -hmm. that you come and see something that we haven't ever seen in our lives. Mm -hmm. There is a TV station working mm -hmm. in a small t radio TV, I mean radio station. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, like this is a radio station that was constructed for that. Yes. But if you want to turn into a TV station, it yes. becomes very complicated in terms of lighting, in terms of sound system. And space everything. for and doing space what you want it. to do, so exactly. Mm. That is what we are doing. Because, you know, we shifted the TV from the other place where it used to work along the Serena Road. We brought our studios into radio studios. Mm -hmm. And so the lighting system would be very poor. The machines were just installed in a radio, t uh, in a radio uh, studio. That means that even the, the machines would sometimes just get crushed. Mm -hmm. And that is what, why you would see cutoffs now and then. When you're watching your favorite program. Yeah. And that was bad. Mm -hmm. But I think today I see the improvement. And I know that by the time I was leaving, we had ordered some equipment to come and support the little that we had there. Mm -hmm. And I hope that by the time they start using the new TV stage uh, studios that are in that building, the former Obeka building, yes. we are going, as a nation, as a country, we are going to be proud of a TV station that we want. Mm -hmm. Because I know that the equipment that was purchased is superb. It is like what we see in, in other international TV stations. If you were to be put back, if we were to, 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 to say, you know, uh, the president or the cabinet does uh, 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 a Joseph Habineza on you <laughs> and take you back to that position, mm -hmm. what different thing would you do? Um, 
You know, I would say that uh, my successors are, are doing a good job mm -hmm. because I know that they are still working from the same physical environment, environment yes. apart from the legal framework. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that I, I was always telling my staff mm -hmm. that we are going to the promised land mm -hmm. with the Bible story mm -hmm. because we are moving from a very hard situation mm -hmm. to a situation that is very professional. Mm -hmm. And today I know that they are still in the desert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they are almost crossing the river going into the promised land. The only difference is Willie is not there with them. No, 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 no. That is no big deal because even when Moses died, Joshua took up. Oh, okay. And uh, God's people went to the promised land. Mm -hmm. And I know that my friend Arthur and uh, his deputy mm -hmm. are on the course. Mm -hmm. But I say that when they start using the new studios, mm -hmm. Rwandans should expect something big and good. Mm -hmm. So if and, you were, that, yes. and that is what I would do with the new studios. What would you do with the new studios? I would make sure that you have new programs on TV, you have pub programs on radio. Because, for example, in radio there, mm -hmm. in that building, mm -hmm. they have got, I think, 12 studios. Mm -hmm. You can imagine. Mm -hmm. One for Radio Rwanda, the main channel, mm -hmm. and, another, and others uh, for this new station that we had started, uh, Magic FM. Yes. And there are production studios too. And there are studios for news. So there is enough space, there is enough equipment, and people are skilled. So I the, would say the ball would be with the staff now. You're right when you say that. Because again, there is a challenge of uh, now being able to fund uh, its, its own businesses in terms of, uh, uh, you know, we may probably see a cut in the government's hand when it comes to funding of, of what happens in there after, you know, they get into full uh, RBA system. So uh, in your own opinion, in your own analysis, how do you think they're going to fare? How do you think Arthur's team is going to fare in this? Having been dependent f in a big way on government funding to, to produce or to do what their projects are, how do you think they're going to fare? I think they are going to fare well. Because according to the new law that governs RBA, it gives them a leeway mm -hmm. to make money mm -hmm. other than just depending on government. Mm -hmm. And in fact, after, after a certain period of time, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Finance will cut completely the budget that they have been getting from the national coffers. Mm -hmm. So this means that we had planned to have a strong department for marketing mm -hmm. and production mm -hmm. to make sure that they can make money. Mm -hmm. And I know they have that department. Mm -hmm. So I think if they have got very smart people, yes, they are going to make money out of this because even the economy is growing, new companies are coming up, new banks are coming up, mm -hmm. and they want to reach their clients. Mm -hmm. So if you have nice programs and that are attractive, yes. then you can attract their advertising money and you get the money to run the institution. Okay. Now, sticking with money matters, your times at uh, Orenfo, uh, there were some claims that uh, there was misappropriation of funds, there were some funds that were not accounted for, and uh, even in the, uh, the, the the report by the Auditor General, uh, you know, we had statements like 4.5 billion of government expenditure uh, lacking, uh, you know, uh, official justification. But you said in your time, and I'll quote, you said that uh, at this particular time, the report, uh, the AG's report was in bad faith basing on the, 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 the claims that they were claiming that some of the money you had not accounted for it. Do you still stick with that statement? For sure, because uh, it's very hard to understand how one would claim that uh, 4 billion, not million by the way, mm -hmm. 4 billion francs mm -hmm. are uncounted for. Mm -hmm. Would you be seeing me here? Don't you know how the government of Rwanda treats the people who mismanages public funds? Mm -hmm. So I would say that maybe when they were auditing, mm -hmm. they had their own issues, mm -hmm. which I don't understand even today. Mm -hmm. But thank God, mm -hmm. I would explain how that money was spent. Mm -hmm. And I think that is why I'm a free man today. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would be in jail. Okay. So yeah. looking forward, uh, uh, Willie, what are the challenges facing the media industry today as, as an old guard, if I may use that word? Mm. Because you've told me your journey from where you started and the way you are today to the time you said, let me now do my private businesses. What is really, you know, aching or, or, or hurting the media industry today? There are various issues. There are various issues because, for example, what I know, even today, mm -hmm. when you meet some practicing journalists, mm -hmm. they tell you we don't get our payment on time. Mm -hmm. And they are from 
across the sector mm -hmm. in our country. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is not being given his little salary at the right time, yes. how do you expect this person to perform? Mm -hmm. He'll try to go outside the boundaries to make sure that he makes ends meet. And that is one of the issues that is affecting our media sector here. Delaying payments. Delaying and payment payments and peanuts, peanuts being given to the practicing journalists. Mm -hmm. And another issue is that um, people seem not to be steady in the profession. Today, Anangwa is in CFM. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, Tomorrow he's, he's the IPR, yes. maybe in one of the telecom companies because they are, Turnover. They are giving him good money. Mm -hmm. And when he's not doing well there, then he bounces back. Mm -hmm. We don't see that in other countries. It is a lot in mm -hmm. Kenya. We see it mm -hmm. so much. You find a, a, a journalist from one media house today is in another one. The next day he's back. In fact, but I would prefer moving to different media houses than, than, than going than outside pr the media. Okay. So mm -hmm. if, if, if w w how do we solve this? Because the media owners will tell you, look, the country's private sector is this small. Yes. And we are this many. Mm. How do you explain that? And, and how do you, you know, creatively deal with that issue? You see, my issue is, should the media in Rwanda be focusing on the Rwandan economy only? Mm -hmm. Yet Rwanda is a member of the largest African community. Mm -hmm. If in Rwanda we are able to watch regional TV stations yes. and listen to regional radio stations, yes. why can't I target the market in Uganda? Look at the number of the buses that cross the border going to Kampara every day. Mm -hmm. Look at the number of buses crossing the border going to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And all these buses are full of business people. Mm -hmm. They are going to do business in Kampara. Mm -hmm. But I think there are some Rwandans who move from maybe Muhanga mm -hmm. to go and shop in Kampara. Yes. But they don't know Kampara. Mm -hmm. They just go there and try to get some people who makes, uh, move ar them around mm -hmm. to make sure that then they know exactly which shop to go and buy certain things. Mm -hmm. But I think if I can have, uh, if I call it a bigger vision yes. and say I'm targeting even the marketing campaign. So you're trying to say my CFM director, looks my director should be looking for Kenya, advertising from Kampara, Uganda, adverts from Nairobi mm -hmm. to make sure that as Rwandans go out, they know where they are going to buy certain things. They know where they are going to get certain services that they need. Mm. And that is very possible. Okay. Look at the people from DRC, the eastern part of it, from Goma, from Bukavu. They have their accounts in our local banks here. So why can't I target that market in order to enlarge the market in which I'm operating from to make sure that every coin comes into my pocket mm. and I pay an angle very well mm -hmm. and he produces a professional program mm -hmm. that is attractive, mm -hmm. that is even attracting the business people. And everybody's happy. Ah, good. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk of decisions here. This is what you'd have done if, if, if you had your own media house uh, in this particular case. Let's get back again to the issue of Orenfo and your time there. In your opinion, what would you tell us that were some of the unpopular decisions that you made while in that position? I don't remember any. Mm -hmm. Because I would always do my work through consultations. Mm -hmm. I would consult the board of mm -hmm. directors. Mm -hmm. I would consult the minister in charge of that organization. Mm -hmm. Even I would consult my, my immediate managers. Mm -hmm. So every decision that I would take would be through consultations. And is, isn't there any other time <coughs> that uh, probably you were misguided after getting this consultation? I don't, no, 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 no. I wouldn't say that. Because if you consult the board of directors, you consult a minister, you consult the managers, you consult the staff, mm -hmm. then you are, you are in safer hands. So everything you did, in your own opinion, you're proud of each and every decision sure I am, I that am, you made. I am, I am. All right. So at this particular point, Willie, I'll bring down the curtains to the show and thank you very honestly for coming uh, to the program today. Thank you for hosting me too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, there you have it. Willie Rukundo, our guest on One on One today. Keep those comments coming and of course we'll be definitely bringing some of those guests that you love to listen from and uh, those who you feel you'd like to hear from them again, we'll definitely be bringing them right here in the program. Asunta Ingavire and uh, Emery Rubagenga. Thank you very much and Murisa and many, many others who are tweeting us and commenting on the show. Remember the hashtag is 101RW. We do it again next time tomorrow morning. Goodbye for now. I'm Eugene Anangwe.